How's it going everybody? Hope you had a nice weekend. It snowed like crazy here and it's really cold so I'm just kind of cooped up in my basement going stir crazy and uh, figured hey I'll make a video and share some of the neat stuff that I've got going on. So check this out. So I'm sure some of you have already seen this little contraption that I built recently. This is a PPFD measuring machine I guess you would call it. And the purpose of this is to move this little sensor all throughout this space and take a whole bunch of measurements to see how much photosynthetically active light is being emitted by whichever light I'm testing. And I actually used to do this all by hand where I would like set the sensor up in a tent, get out of the tent, zip it up, take a reading, and then go in, move the sensor, and repeat over and over and over, and it was terrible. So this has been like a huge improvement for sure. And up until this point, I've been just sending commands from my desktop just through MQTT, like through a program like MQTT Box, and, and telling this thing what to do. But I figured, hey, like, I have this tablet that sits on the control bar, on this little control box here right behind me, so why not leverage Home Assistant to control my measuring machine as well? And that's what I've done. So I added this light measure tab and I have all these buttons and the majority of them all they do is send an MQTT uh, topic and payload out. They just publish a message when I press the button and that's read by the Node MCU that's controlling my little uh, Gerbil Uno, the thing that actually has the like the CNC type programming in it. So I have all the functionality that I had from my desktop now on this little tablet and it's awesome. So for example, I can stop the thing if I hold it for long enough, which I did because I don't hear it anymore. And uh, I can reset, unlock, move it to a certain position, like go to absolute position. It will look at whatever coordinates I've entered for X and Y. And when I hold that, it'll take those and build it into a little string and then tell the thing to go to that position or I can jog it. So right now it's set to 300. Let's see if I can edit that. Let's say we'll send it to 200. And then I just pick which way do I want to jog it? Do I want to jog it on the Y axis upwards? Hold this button. And it moves 200 mils for me. So this is great. Having this control, I can start sequences with it, so I can get it going back on the 5x5 sequence that I interrupted earlier. So I hit that, and it's going to home itself, and then start doing the 3-inch interval measurement thing. And having it on Home Assistant is great because I can use my phone too, which, I mean, like it's a lot of, a lot of buttons to control on a very small interface. So that part is not ideal but having like not having to run back and forth from my desktop or hook up a laptop or something has been great so yeah that's my latest i guess uh home assistant modification that i've made to the system and it's it's been very handy i'll splice in a better explanation of how these things actually work here so let's look at a really easy one like the unlock button if i go to edit so nothing happens on the tap of the button because I want to I want to have to hold them since I don't want to accidentally press them and have something happen. So on the hold action I have a call service. The service is mqtt.publish and then you have to go into this show code editor to change the payload and topic and whatever else. So the topic that I'm publishing to I've called light measure slash raw. So anything that I want to just pass straight through from the node that this that picks up this message to the uno that has this cnc shield on it i just publish to light measure slash raw and the node just takes it and then fires it out over serial so for example this one the payload is going to be dollar sign x and that gets published to this topic when i hold that button and then some of the slightly more advanced ones like the jog buttons same deal call service mqtt.publish but instead of just a straight payload under uh, this section here it uses payload underscore template and uh, that's because it's looking at the input number that I have set here under jog distance so every time I hold that button 
it's going to build a string. The first part's going to say G21, G91X every single time. And then everything between these two curly braces here and here is kind of like a variable. And this is, this is the template part of this button here. So it's saying whatever the state of input number dot jog distance is, then put that number in this string. So for example, right now it would just insert a 200. And then after that, it has this F4000, which is always going to, to be the same. This is the feed rate, just sort of like the speed at which I want to move that gantry. So each one of these jogs, jog uh, X plus and X minus and Y plus and Y minus look very similar, except this character right here might change. So this is like a positive jog. So on the jog X minus or an X negative, it would look like this. And then I would have the Y negative like this and the Y positive like this. And then anything that I'm publishing that, uh, th that I don't want to go straight through into the Uno, I send to a topic called macros. And that just means that I have a little chunk of code in the node MCU that's uh, receiving this message and then doing like a, a bunch of different events with it. So yeah, pretty simple here. You hold a button that will publish the MQTT message. The node MCU receives that message and then either passes it straight through to the UNO with the shield or it uh, runs some different lines of code and, and pushes multiple stuff to the UNO with the shield and that's over serial. So it's actually been quite a while since I've grown something which is pretty sad because it's so therapeutic to come down and just kind of like tend your plants and relax and just hang out. But I'd say maybe a month back or even a little bit longer I had four seedlings just like this maybe a touch further along and they were the only plants I had growing. I just started them having not grown for even longer before then and some jerk ass little thrips found their way in and completely destroyed everything and I've tried fighting thrips before and I've lost despite a valiant effort I would say on my part and I just did not want to fight them like from day one all the way through the grow again so I abandoned those ones. Rip. And uh, these are the, the new recruits for my experiment. So these are the infamous golden shower tomatoes, as I like to call them. I forget by now what their actual name is. It's like a golden breakfast or a golden sunrise or something dumb like that. What I'm going to do is grow these three out and take the biggest one, take four cuttings off of it, and then move them over onto this side, my 4 by 4 side. I'll put the wall up, move the humidifier. I'm obviously just kind of getting stuff set up again, but uh, I'm going to run them through an automated grow using all my control box hardware and programming and stuff and do a little side-by-side -side experiment. So on one side, I'm going to have just straight uh, horticulture lighting group quantum boards. This is uh, two QB288 288R specs with a meanwhile 240 watt driver. And then on this side, I have the same rig, same driver, same boards, but I'm going to turn the power down a little bit on this one and supplement it with these buddies from LED Technic. So I can wrap these reds around the cage. I'll just use like a few strings of them. Get my side lighting all the way up that one and this one. And as the plant grows, I'll just stack another cage on and wrap more lighting around it. But I think in order to make it fair, like I say, I'm going to drop the power on this one. So let's say this side is, is uh, pulling 200 watts from the wall. Then I'll make sure that this guy is pulling 160 and the side lighting is pulling 40. So both of them pull the same power from the wall and uh, try to balance it that way. And we'll see how the side lighting does versus the straight lighting. And last but not least, I just finished building these two atrium lights. So these are the Vila kits. The back one is a 240 watt version, this is the 320 watt version in the front. And I'm going to be testing these in my PPFD measurement enclosure as well. I'm just working on building an insert for it so I have like a 2 foot by 4 foot section that's going to sit in the middle since these things are rated for flowering, a 2 foot by 4 foot tent. So get that insert in there and get those numbers, I'll be curious to see how they do. 
And actually, I just recently changed the floor out in this enclosure. It used to be reflective, just like the walls, but I decided that that wasn't really a, a good, hmm, didn't really translate to like real world applications where not a lot of the light is going to hit the floor, you know, if you have a bunch of plants in there. And I think having my floor as reflective, all the light was bouncing off the floor, hitting the ceiling, and then coming back and hitting the sensor again. So I think it might have been sort of increasing the results more than you would expect. So I decided to paint it black, and because of that, I'm going to be retesting the lights that I had already tested with the reflective floor. So that's the Horticulture Lighting Group 650R and the 600R spec. And also in the back there is a Spider Farmer SF4000 that those guys th sent me. So thank you to Spider Farmer as well. So lots on the go for sure. Holy cow. Just talking about it all is making me think, God, I, I got to get down to work here. So <laughs> I'll get back to it. Uh, and yeah, I, if this uh, content interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. Got a little bit of momentum now. I'd love to see it grow even more. So. Take care, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.